section of the course, we're going to talk about gems and specifically how we can use them best in our applications. Now, I've seen two different sides to the way that gems are utilized uh, on the bad scale. One is where people think that they barely have to write any code at all and they just have to find a gem for every feature in the application. That is definitely not a good way to go about it. One, you're going to end up spending more time trying to find the right gem than if you just built the application. Uh, the other side of it is people who say they don't want to have anything to do with gems at all and build everything themselves. That's also not a great way to do it because there are people and some incredibly talented people who have spent a lot of time building out some gems that could save you a lot of time, heartache, debugging, all of that. So the best way to go about it is to find a good balance. A good example would be I really like using the device gem for authentication. It makes it very easy to do the kinds of things that I need to do for probably about 90% of the applications I use. So it's very rare that I have to build any authentication from scratch because of that. Uh, if you look through your gem file, it's located at the root of your system. You can see we have a lot of gems here. And one of the most surprising ones you may see is Rails. And so what Rails is, is a Ruby gem. Rails at its core is essentially a set of modules and uh, code libraries that are Ruby files that are called and let you do a lot of things in the application. So the main thing I want you to get out of this video is what gems really are at their core. They are not magical, they are just Ruby. They're Ruby codes that are brought in. They're libraries. Sometimes you may call them packages in other languages like Java or something like that. And you bring them in your application and they give you access to custom methods that they created. Technically, you could go into each one of these Ruby gem files and copy all the code, bring them into your application manually, and have access to them the same way as if you built all those methods from scratch yourself. I definitely don't recommend doing that, but I just want to let you know exactly how it works. This is not something secret. The gems are just Ruby code that make it easy for you to have built-in functionality without you having to do all of it yourself. So in the next upcoming videos, we're going to walk through how to use some popular Ruby gems and how you can integrate those into your project.